It's been a full year since I made this video that's helped a ton of people. Since then, I've gathered nine more tips that's gonna make you an even better split boarder. Let's get into it. Number one is the most efficient and fastest way that I've found to take your board apart when you get done with a run. First thing that you're gonna to wanna to do is get out of your whole board as fast as possible. So you're gonna unclip, unclip, undo your bindings, undo your bindings, unclip, unclip. Unclamp your bindings, step on the board, slide your bindings off. Next, you're gonna take the board apart Left binding is gonna go straight to the right ski, and right binding is gonna go straight to the left ski. And now you're ready for skins. Now I'm gonna show you the easiest way I've found to put on your skin. So the first thing that you're gonna do is obviously start it at the top. From here, you're gonna come down, and you're gonna take the skin in the middle, and you're gonna put it right to the ski. Stick it there, flip the skin over, and from there, you're gonna attach the tail clip, smooth it out, and you're good to go. The next tip is a, a huge mistake that I always used to do, and that is not adjusting your high back. So what you wanna have happen on the uphills, you want your high back to be as high as you can. The reason is, is because if you have it down, like you would for ride mode, look at the angle that is compared to if you had it all the way up. If you did not adjust this from how you had it when you were riding, at an angle, you're gonna be lessening your stride length on the uphill by quite a percentage point. So the first thing that you wanna do when you transition from ride mode back to walk mode is adjust these high backs. So you're just gonna simply move it all the way up so that it will actually touch the back of the binding here. Now, when you get up to the top, first thing that you're gonna to wanna to do, obviously, is move these back down so you can get that angle back and then you can ride good again. The next tip is to subscribe to my channel for more splitboarding and backpacking content. As a reward, here's a gnarly video of my buddy trying to tele-ski down a very steep slope. Oh my God. <laughs> Next is that I finally found the best poles for split boarding in my opinion. And the reason I love these is because of how quickly and how nicely they fold up and then are able to store in your bag so that you don't have these large trekking poles sticking out of the back of your bag that look like antennas. And next is how easily they actually deploy when you dig them out of your bag and how durable they are. Next is that when you're in the back country, avoid using headphones. And the reason why is because you need to be aware of the danger around you, if there's any avalanches, if there's any woomphing, all of the sounds of the back country you need to hear. So the next tip is to make sure that you are going at a zone two pace when you are walking uphill. Now, what is a zone two pace? Real crudely, it is basically being able to breathe through your nostrils the whole time that you're going uphill. You should never be at a point where you're sucking air through your mouth. If you're doing that, you're likely going too fast. The reason you wanna stay at a zone two heart rate level is because you're gonna be able to go much, much longer than if you're going at a much higher pace. Slow is fast. Now the next tip has to do with putting your skis together as an A-frame when you're about to go up a steep section of a mountain and you're gonna boot up. Instead of just having your skis loose like this to flop around, you're gonna take your volet strap and you're gonna go under the clips right here. Very important to go under them because if you don't do that, it's just gonna slide right off of your skis. So now tighten that as tight as possible. So tight, in fact, that you don't think it can go any further. Boom, and you're gonna fold that over, right, like that, and then stuff the extra tail inside. And now, you look like a real ski mountaineer. Now, in the last video, we talked about being able to flip the risers down or up with the lip of your trekking pole. But oftentimes in the cold, they're gonna be super hard to move, and that's where this comes in. Any kind of chapstick will do. What you're just gonna wanna do is lube the areas where the riser packs. Here, right here. Let's check it out. Prior to filming, these were super hard to flip, so we'll see what it looks like now. Oh my gosh, yeah. Literally probably a 60% difference. Next is to make sure that you have a multi-tool that's always available to be ready to go to fix your bindings, to fix anything that might be loose on a split board, which happens all the time. Now, if you learned something from this and appreciate the effort that I put into capturing all of this stuff by myself, please leave a like and subscribe.